Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make a bed and closet for your stuffed animal, which is also part one of how to make a room for your stuffed animal. This is something my sister and I used to do all the time, so I'm really excited to show how. Now let's get started! The first thing I'm going to show is how to make a bed, and I'm going to do it in two sizes, one for a smaller stuffed animal or Beanie Boo, and one for a Build-A-Bear. For the smaller bed, I'm going to use a chapter book as the base. You could also use a box or really anything the right size and shape. Next, I'm going to grab a piece of fabric, and mine is 18 by 21 inches. And I'm going to fold it in half and lay it on top of the book, then open it up and grab some stuffing. Then I'm just going to stretch it out a little and lay it flat on top of the book and fold over the fabric again. This will give our stuffed animals at least a little bit of cushion to sleep on. Then I can wrap the sides of the fabric around the book and tuck it under. You'll notice I'm not really gluing anything down or making anything permanent, and that's just because with rooms and stuff like that, my crafting style is more using objects around the house to make stuff, and when I'm done using it, I can always just take it apart. This is just easiest for me, but if you want, you could be cutting stuff, gluing things, and making more of a permanent bed if you want. Now for the blanket, you can just get another piece of fabric, but I was looking through old pictures of rooms I made and thought it was funny that I was using a hat for the blanket. But since I have this really cute fuzzy white hat, I thought it was genius. And so I'm basically putting it around the bottom of the bed and pulling it up. And then you can tuck your stuffed animal right in. But we still need to add some pillows, so I'm going to show you a few methods to do that. The first method is really easy, and that's just taking a sock. I'm going to use a fuzzy sock and stuffing it with pillow fluff or fabric scraps. I had a little trouble closing up the end, so you could use a safety pin or place another sock around that open part. But I did not think of those things at the time, so I just left it. And this easily creates a really big pillow for your stuffed animal. Now the next method involves using toilet paper to make pillows. I know you might be thinking that sounds really weird, but as a little kid who didn't know how to sew, these get the job done. I'm starting by taking two squares of toilet paper and grabbing some pillow fluff and basically just wrapping the toilet paper around it and taping it closed. Then the ends I'm gonna kinda wrap like a present, folding in those corners and then taping it down in the back. So they really only look good from one side, but you really only see one side anyway. And that is pretty much it. They're really easy to make and you can make them bigger if you want, or just use a lot of small ones. I just made one more for this little bed I'm making, and once you add them on top, the bed is done. I'm gonna dress it up with a little throw pillow I made out of felt a really long time ago. It is this really cute heart with a face on it, and I sewed it all by hand, using the same method I did to make that pee pillow in my Easter video. So you can always make any kind of pillow you want using that method. Next, I'm going to start making the bigger bed that'll fit a Build-A-Bear or any similarly sized stuffed animal. For the base of this one, I'm using a cereal box, and you may want to use the family size if you want it a little bigger, or you can use a different size box or just tape two together. I'm going to be adding the padding a little bit differently this time, Instead of using fabric and stuffing, I'm just grabbing this large pillowcase that I like the pattern of, and I'm just folding it in half twice until it's the size of the cereal box, and then I can drape it on top. Of course, you don't have to use a pillowcase for this, really any kind of fabric will work, even your own t-shirt or something, so you can really just cover this any way that you want. The way that I folded the pillowcase, it didn't cover the size of the cereal box, so I'm going to cover that with white paper so you can't tell it's a cereal box. You could also use wood grain scrapbook paper for this, that would look really good. Now for this blanket, I'm going to be putting in a little bit more work. I'm going to be making a reversible comforter. So each side will have its own pattern, so I can just flip it over for different styles. I'm going to use three kinds of fabric for this. I'm going to use this green and rose cotton one to show on the outside. And for an extra layer on the inside, I'm going to be using this elephant flannel that I have a lot of. So I'm first flipping my two main fabrics good side to good side, and just laying it over the bed to see how long I want to make it. And the good thing about all these creases in the fabric are they'll help me guide where to cut. Don't worry though, I will iron them out later. I still need to cut out the same size of the elephant fabric, so let me just do that. Next, I'm gonna layer the fabrics in the order of the two fabrics I want showing on the outside should be good side to good side, and then the elephant fabric can be on the outside of either of those pieces. Then I'm pinning all three layers together around the perimeter since that's where I'm gonna be sewing. Now I'm going to use a straight stitch to sew around this entire rectangle, but I'm going to leave a little opening at the bottom in the middle. After I'm done, it looks like this, and I probably only left an inch and a half of opening at the bottom, but it was really hard to turn inside out, so I'd recommend leaving a two inch space or more. So now I just need to turn this thing inside out. I'm using a ruler to really poke out those corners. 
Looking at it once it's done, I was really glad I didn't iron this from the beginning because it got super wrinkled anyway, so I'm just gonna iron this real quick. The last thing I do is sew up that opening in the bottom. So I'm just pinning it together with the sides already folded in, and then I can use a straight stitch to sew that up. After that, it's basically finished, but if you wanna dress it up a little, you could do some more stitching around the entire perimeter, and you could even sew more lines in the center, making square or diamond shapes. I thought it looked good like this though, so I'm just gonna leave it. Now I can lay this on the bed, and to make it really pretty, I like to fold over the edge, which shows off that it's double-sided. One more thing we need for this bed though is the pillows, of course. You can use the other methods I've already shown, but I also wanna do some sewn ones, so I'm gonna show you how to do that now. I'm first cutting out two rectangle pieces the size that I want the pillows to be, and after ironing this fabric too, I'm just gonna flip them good side to good side, and like the blanket, sew around the perimeter of the whole thing, except for the middle of the bottom. Then I can flip it inside out and stuff it. And of course, the last thing to do is sew up that opening. And that is basically it. With the sewing machine, these pillows and blanket are also pretty easy to make. Now I can just add them to the bed and the bed is finished. I may add some throw pillows to dress it up a little, but that'll be in next week's video when I decorate and assemble the room. So now I'm gonna move on to making the closet. And this is not something I had in my original room since my stuffed animals didn't have many clothes back then, but I got a request for it, so decided to make it. So here I just have an Amazon box, which was eight inches by 14 inches by seven inches deep. And you can use any size box you have. I know this one is pretty skinny, but I didn't need my closet to be too big. The first thing I need to do is cut off all the tabs. I'll be honest, the next step I ended up doing was pretty useless, and I'll explain why. I'm basically cutting up little rectangles of paper, and I'm gonna glue these around the raw edges of the box. This will give the closet a nice clean look. The reason why this is pointless though, is because we're gonna be covering the outside and inside of this closet with paper. So what I should have done is just leave the piece hanging over a little bit, and then just fold over that edge sticking out. There was no need to spend all this time cutting small pieces of paper to do the exact same thing. I didn't realize that till I was finished, so I ended up doing the whole thing, but we can just skip through that. After that, I'm gonna start covering the inside of the box with just some plain white recycled paper. Here, I cut off the edge that was sticking out, but I really just should've folded it over. You can also use any color or kind of paper for this. I wasn't sure what the final design of the room would be, so I just kept it simple and did white, but you can use scrap of paper to give this closet any kind of wallpaper you want. So now I'm just gonna cover all the walls of the closet, including the ceiling and floor. After I was done, it looked like this. As you can see, it's kind of patched together and not perfect, but once I add the clothes in, they'll cover up most of the flaws. Now, I didn't do this with the first closet I made, but I'm going to cover the outside of this in white paper, just so it's more presentable all around. After that, I need to make the rod that'll hold up those clothes hangers. You can use a wooden dowel for this or any kind of stick you have, but I'm gonna be making mine out of paper. So to do that, I'm taking a marker and putting it in the corner of my paper. Then I can roll up the paper with the marker inside. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue at the end to secure it and add one more piece of paper to make this a little thicker. I also had to use a pencil to get the marker out because sometimes it is really stuck in there. This time I covered the entire paper in glue just to make sure it would all stick. And after that, our little tube is ready and now I just need to cut it to the right length. I'm comparing it to the closet and marking where I need to cut the ends. And luckily the tube isn't too thick so I can easily cut through with scissors. Mine ended up being a perfect fit, and since it was on the tight side, I didn't need super strong glue to hold this in, I just added some glue stick to the ends. But if yours is a little looser, you might want to use some stronger glue. Shoving it in there can be a little tricky, but luckily this glue stick is disappearing purple. While that dries, I'm going to start making the hangers, and I actually want to draw a new pattern for this, adapted from some hangers I've previously made. The good thing about this old design was with this bar at the bottom, you can theoretically put your pants through there and hang them up, but it does take a lot more work to cut it out, and I think I had to use an X-Acto knife. So this time, I'm drawing out a pattern without the bar at the bottom. I'll also link this pattern in the description box. Now I can just trace this on thin pieces of cardboard. I'm using cereal boxes and tissue boxes, stuff like that. Now I'm just gonna keep tracing and cutting these out until I have five or six hangers. I 
want to quickly show how I hang my stuffed animal clothes on these. Since the necklines of a lot of stuffed animal clothes are really wide, you kind of have to push the shoulders closer together when you hang them on the hanger. And this obviously doesn't show off the clothes the best, but if you want them to hang down more normally, you can make the hangers a lot wider. Now I'm going to start painting the hangers, just so it fits with the room more. I decided to go with a light pink, very similar to the hangers I already made. And so I just need to do a lot of coats of this on the front and the back. After I've painted all of my hangers, I can finally add the clothes and fill up my closet. The clothes surprisingly take up a lot of room in there, but if I added more hangers, I'm sure I could fit more in. I added a few shirts, a romper, and the onesie I made last week. Since I have extra room under the shirts, I'm going to store the sneakers there, and also the sandals. And there you go! That is the final closet! I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And make sure to tune in next week for part 2, where I'm going to assemble the room and decorate it, which is definitely my favorite part. I'll see you next time! Bye!